Hello and welcome to another episode of the All Things Adobe Chad and Todd podcast. I am Chad Perkins and in this two-part episode of the Chad and Todd podcast, we're going to look at the ever-elusive pen tool and the Bezier curves it creates. This Bezier system of curves that we'll be looking at was developed in the 1970s by French mathematician and computer scientist Pierre Bezier for the Renault Car Company. And still, 30 years later, this is still baffling people. And so we're going to debunk all those mysteries in this first part. And in the second part, part two, we're going to look at additional features added in Illustrator CS3 to help you as you're drawing with the pen tool and working with Bezier paths. Now, I'm going to be working here in Illustrator for this tutorial, but this is applicable if you're using Flash, which has a pen tool. There's also a pen tool in After Effects. There's also a pen tool in Photoshop. And there's a pen tool in InDesign. And that's just to name a few. Now, no matter which program you're using, be it Flash or After Effects or Photoshop or InDesign, you're probably still going to do a lot of path creation here in Illustrator. After all, that's what Illustrator was designed for. So no matter which program you're working in, bust out that old pen tool and let's get working here. Now, first, I'm just going to click to create a new path. This little X icon next to my cursor tells me that I'm going to be creating a brand new path. As you're working in Adobe products, and by the way, the pen tool is in all sorts of products, Corel Draw and all sorts of programs like that. But when you're in Adobe programs, that little icon next to your cursor is going to give you some great feedback about what you're doing as you're creating your path. We'll talk more about that later. So the simplest way to create a Bezier path is just to click and let go click and let go, click and let go, and in this way we create a flat edged object. You can even hold down the shift key to constrain the lines to be 45 degree angles. Now we could have our path open ended like this, essentially just a line, or we can go back to the home base and again our cursor turns into a little O and that icon tells us that if we click here, we create a closed path. Now, if that's all there was to the pen tool, we'd all be in good shape because that's pretty easy. So I'm going to hit the delete key on my keyboard a couple times, get rid of that path, and show you the real trick to the pen tool. The real hard stuff is dealing with Bezier curves. So instead of just clicking this time and letting go, I'm going to click and drag. Now what I've done here looks like creating a line right it looks like I've created a line but I have done no such thing I've only created a point and this extra stuff these extra lines with dots are basically guides they're helpers to help me draw the best curve possible and in Illustrator and for the purposes of this tutorial the terminology I'm going to be using is Illustrator terminology these are called direction handles and these little balls at the end are called direction points so that really the only part of my path that I've drawn is this first point. Now I can come over here and click and drag. And you can see that I have a second direction handle with a second set of direction points. And as I move this, I'm influencing the shape of my curve. We control direction handles by playing around with direction points. In Illustrator, to do that, I click on the white arrow tool, AKA the direct selection tool. By clicking around on these direction handles, I could adjust the angle of the curve and the length of the curve. See, there's a modest curve and there's an intense curve. Now, what we covered so far is probably what the majority of the population understands about the Bezier pen tool. But let's delve a little deeper here and figure out the rest of the mystery behind this. Now, as a general rule of thumb, these handles probably want to go about a third of the way through the path. In other words, the length of this direction handle should be about a third of the length of this segment here. Now, of course, rules were made to be broken, but for the smoothest possible curve, that's a good rule of thumb. Also, it pays to know that there are two different types of anchor points. Again, these anchor points here, these dots, they anchor down this segment and they give us the lines that we need to control what that segment looks like. But again, there are two different types. To see this, I'm going to go back to my pen tool. I'm going to finish drawing this path. 
The way that we do that, because again, remember that this X tells me I'm going to start a new path. To continue drawing on an existing point, I go back over an open endpoint, and then I get this diagonal slash instead of an X. This diagonal slash of an icon next to my cursor tells me that I'm going to be continuing an existing path. Click on that, and now I can click and drag and continue drawing as before. So I'm just going to draw a few different curves and shapes here. Now I'm going to hit the letter A to get the direct selection tool. And again, if you're wondering about the difference between the black arrow tool and the white arrow tool, the black arrow, or in other words, the regular selection tool, selects whole objects. So if we wanted to select this path and move the whole thing around, then we would use the black arrow selection tool. Now if we want to select pieces of that path, in other words, anchor points or direction points or what have you, then we would use the direct selection tool. Now I can see all of my anchor points here. They're all still solid because I selected them all when I clicked on this with the selection tool. But to get control over each individual point, then we need to have just the points that we want selected. So I'm going to click outside of this to deselect this path. Then I'm going to put my mouse over where the anchor point is. And you can see that as I do that, it kind of pops up here. That's another new feature in Illustrator CS3. If you have a previous version of Illustrator, you might want to click and drag a marquee around a point that you want to select. Now, I mentioned a moment ago that there are two different types of anchor points. One is a smooth point, and that is a point like this, where if I move one of the handles, the other one moves accordingly to make sure that we have a curve as smooth as possible. The other type of point in Illustrator is called a corner point. Now, a corner point just basically means that the handles operate independently of one another. So this would be a good example of a corner point. This side has a handle, and this side of the anchor point doesn't even have a handle at all. So corner points can be corners. They can have two curves coming out of each side of the point. They can have one straight and one curve coming out of the point as well. The point is, is that each segment, the segment on each side of a corner point, is independent of the other. Again, as opposed to a smooth point where they are related and connect it. Now there are many ways to change the type of anchor point that we're using. Let's say I wanted this to be kind of like a hybrid point with a curve on the left side and then a corner on the right hand side. I can click and drag this direction handle on this side and drag it into the point. Once I drag it into the anchor point I will have successfully made this like a hybrid corner point with a curve on one side and a flat corner on the right hand side. Now underneath the pen tool, there's another tool called the convert anchor point tool. I could also click on a smooth point such as this to get a corner point, which basically takes a smooth point and converts both sides to a corner. And by the way, this is really good. Let's say if I have like an ellipse shape, for example, over here, and if I wanted to convert this to the standard eye shape, I can go to the convert point tool and convert the smooth points on either side two points like this, making like an eye shape. I'm just going to delete that for now here. Now likewise, if I hold the control key and get access to this path again, I can go over with the convert anchor point tool over a corner point and click and drag to make it smooth. Basically again, just click and drag on an anchor point to get handles back, making it a smooth point. 